Era il 22 agosto 2012 e tutto cominciò qui, in questa rossa psichedelica cameretta a casa dei miei. Ora praticamente una biblioteca strapiena di film, di libri, di fumetti e di varie amenità, ovunque, anche dove non vedete. Avevo questa maglietta, avevo ancora i capelli. E da lì a breve avrei anche iniziato la facoltà di psicologia fondamentale per le analisi che ci hanno accompagnato negli anni, cresciute di qualità e approfondimento proprio grazie agli studi accademici. Cinema degli eccessi nacque ovviamente in una notte buia e tempestosa, dove con Davide, con il quale fondai Shiva, non so, i più affezionati se lo ricorderanno... Ma, amore, qual è la tua perversione preferita? Non posso dirtelo. Sì, dai, ma puoi dire tutto. No, è troppo, è troppo eccessiva, non ma posso va, dirtelo. Non, non ci credo, dimmi tutto, dimmi tutto. Te lo dico? Dai, sei pronta? Certo! Pronta, pronta? Prontissima! Scoparmi morti! Anche la mia! No. <ride> Vidi di fila Martyrs e Serbian Film e il pensiero è stato uno. Tutti dovevano conoscere questi film, tutti dovevano conoscere questo modo di fare cinema. Doveva essere un modo per fidelizzare un pubblico in modo da attirare l'attenzione sui nostri cortometraggi, onestamente facevano pure cagare quei cortometraggi, anche se fatti davvero co con il cuore e con impegno. Zitto, sacco di merda! Da lì, piano piano, Cinema degli Eccessi è diventato praticamente tutto il canale, e non lo nego, nel tempo è stato anche una dannazione. O Cinema degli Eccessi o nulla, il nostro pubblico non voleva altro. E per me che il cinema è tutto da vedere, a prescindere dal genere, è stato un colpo. Possibile che potevo parlare solo di questo? Sono passati anche di qua il grandissimo Saverio... L'unico difetto della marijuana e che fa perdere la memoria. Beh, per lo meno non fa perdere la memoria. La grandissima Fabiola. Si può fare! Poi con Stefano e con Simone abbiamo tentato di abbandonare le vie dell'eccesso e abbiamo provato a concentrarci su altro. Mi sono masturbato sulla prima ora di Salò. Ma chi non l'ha mai fatto? Dai, su via! <ride> non... Io ancora mi sogno la polenta per i chiodi, quindi figurati. Ma l'ombra era sempre lì. Anche perché quel famoso libro iniziato nel 2017 non riuscivo a finirlo ma ora le cose sono cambiate perché ho capito definitivamente che cinema degli eccessi non è solo un modo di fare cinema è un modo di fare e fruire arte è una sottile tendenza a portare noi stessi e il cinema stesso sempre al di là dei limiti è una perenne ricerca emotiva artistica più o meno catartica che scalpella o viene scalpellata dalla nostra personalità e questa consapevolezza mi è arrivata incontrando negli anni tanti di voi strapieni d'affetto e giuro che non smetterò mai di ringraziare ma soprattutto incontrandovi in quest'ultimo anno. Ho visto in molti di voi una sincera nostalgia di Cinema degli Eccessi, un affetto immenso, gente che è cresciuta e si è formata attraverso la rubrica. Tutto ciò mi ha sempre commosso, poiché sono sentimenti che ho sempre relegato agli artisti, non a chi, eh, come me, come noi, fa video su YouTube. Al massimo siamo intrattenitori, divulgatori, ma forse Cinema degli Eccessi è effettivamente qualcosa di più. La nostalgia è un sentimento che odio, cerco sempre di andare avanti e trovare i miei stimoli da emozioni nuove, non vecchie. Sono un po' fatto così poiché il passato non tornerà mai e rimanerne incatenati è una rovina. Costruire nuovi ricordi è sempre la mia prospettiva, la mia visione, il mio obiettivo. Ma come dicevamo, Cinema degli Eccessi non è solo una rubrica, quindi perché non costruire ricordi nuovi attraverso di lei? Perché non andare avanti con lei ancora per un pochino? Mi sono chiesto questo, ma tra l'altro poi chi se la ricorda la vecchissima sigla? Scommetto che la primissima primissima non ve la ricordate. Grazie a Cinema degli Accessi ho anche potuto lavorare, essere invitato alle anteprime, collaborare con persone fantastiche, intervistare quei registi pazzi in culo che adoriamo, scrivere quel libro che finalmente uscirà per Eris Edizioni e portare il Cinema degli Accessi anche nella vita vera, con le presentazioni che sto facendo in quest'ultimo anno, soprattutto tra Milano e Torino. Avevo già deciso il ritorno di Cinema degli Accessi da mesi e mesi, stavo solo cercando la vibrazione giusta per ripartire, vibrazione che è arrivata verso luglio, quando ho letto che Sergian Spasoy sarebbe stato al Torino Underground Cinefest. Quel regista che diede il via a tutto sarebbe arrivato in Italia. Emozionato come una bambina, corro a scrivere all'ufficio stampa chiedendo di poterlo intervistare. Mi propongono anche la presentazione dell'evento e il mio piccolo cuoricino si riempie. Ecco l'occasione. Bentornati a Cinema degli Accessi. Ma 
quanto ma quanto è bello questo nuovo sfondo di cinema degli eccessi che ha fatto Simone bravo Simone grazie ragazzi ciao benvenuti dunque a cinema degli eccessi 2. Ma come state pagliacci me? Spero che siate esaltati quanto noi di questo ritorno di Cinema degli Eccessi e come potevamo ricominciare se non da dove siamo partiti. E Sergan Film è un po' il manifesto di tutto ciò che ruota attorno alla nostra filosofia. Se poniamo Salò o le 120 giornate di Sodoma come opera magna e per me miglior film della storia del cinema, intoccabile e irraggiungibile nel suo essere eccessivo ma significante, e Sergan Film rappresenta bene un nuovo modo di essere sconvolgenti e come vedremo nell'intervista è quasi un opposto di Salò. Ora, mi spiace per lui ma Spasojevic sicuramente non è Pasolini, così come nessuno sarà mai come Pasolini. Paragonare qualcuno a lui e al suo Salò vuol dire perdere e straperdere in partenza, ma i due film sono un ottimo specchio dei tempi in cui sono usciti. Per Salò siamo a metà degli anni 70, ormai tutto si poteva rappresentare e c'era una certa necessità di andare oltre e dimostrare e dimostrare politicamente il proprio essere, con la necessità in questo caso di chiamare in causa uno come il Marchese de Sade e ricontestualizzarlo in epoca fascista. Forse l'atto cinematografico più potente di sempre. Il risultato fu che Pasolini fu criticato, accusato di essere un pervertito, il film non fu capito da molti. Anche il Serbian Film è specchio dei tempi in cui uscì, ma anche dei nostri. Il cambiamento della società è attualmente velocissimo, ma non così tanto da aver fatto invecchiare già il film, se non magari a livello fotografico. Diciamo che da sto punto di vista è un po' incastonato in quel periodo, e attenzione, non sto parlando solo delle tematiche, ma della natura stessa del film e di tutto lo scandalo mediatico che si porta appresso. Ci interroghiamo perennemente su cosa significhi il film, se la violenza è giustificata, se non lo è, abbiamo bisogno di sapere che dietro tutto ciò c'è un senso. Da una parte crediamo che non ci sia, che sia mera violenza atta solo a sconvolgere e dunque critichiamo e odiamo il film. Dall'altra necessitiamo di vederci un senso per giustificare il nostro voyeurismo e il fatto di essere stati intrattenuti da quello che è un film che ci tiene effettivamente incollati allo schermo. Dall'altra parte ancora nascono significati direttamente dal pubblico, che vengono presi come verità assolute e addirittura usate come dichiarazioni del regista. Ma dove sta la verità? Bella domanda, nel senso che è proprio questo che intendo reputando essere un film una fotografia dei tempi. Un qualcosa di cui non si conosce la verità, di cui una o più verità si costruiscono in mano al pubblico e alla critica, esattamente come ogni scandalo da social o ogni evento di cronaca a cui siamo chiamati a dare la nostra opinione, se no, porca miseria, pare moriamo da un momento all'altro. Dalla notte dei tempi i manuali di retorica del cinema sottolineano come effettivamente il significato di un film sia co-costruito dal regista e dal pubblico e questo come vedremo anche dall'intervista, è quanto mai vero con il Serbian Film. E dunque la metafora degli orrori della guerra e della dittatura prima di Tito e poi di Milosevic si è sparsa a macchia d'olio come interpretazione e forse giustificazione delle nefandezze del film. Se questo è vero o no, lo sentirete tra poco, direttamente dalla bocca del regista. L'opera fa comunque scalpore e ogni volta che se ne parla qualcuno inorridisce. Alla proiezione di venerdì due persone sono uscite dalla sala, per esempio, e ogni volta che qualcuno lo nomina in una discussione su internet finisce quasi sempre in cacciara con insulti e quant'altro. E Serbian Film dunque vive e vivrà per decine e decine d'anni, che voi lo vogliate o meno. Fatto sta che una persona, in questo caso un artista inserita in una cultura, in questo caso quella serba, in un determinato periodo storico, in questo caso post-conflittuale, porta inevitabilmente i segni e le conseguenze nella sua vita e nella sua arte, anche se non parla esplicitamente di un qualcosa. E Serbian Film è anche un'opera sullo stato dell'arte, sulla carenza culturale non solo serba ma mondiale, che con la ultra-globalizzazione di film fatti su ricerche di mercato alla Netflix è di nuovo quanto mai vera e prodroma di pigrizia intellettuale, che porta un po' alla vendita e alla svendita pornografica degli autori e degli attori. Bukmir è incastrato in un sistema corrotto ma non è la corruzione stessa, è anch'esso illuso di poter portare avanti la sua stupida idea attraverso anche la corruzione, certo, ma è solo un ingranaggio di un sistema politico che è in perenne macchinazione. Forse anche lui faceva parte dello stesso film di Milos. 
forse oltre che autore è anch'esso vittima. La videocamera di Vukmir e dei suoi adepti non è violenta come quella di Atroz o come pensavo io, ma è un mezzo che rende e serve a un film un'opera più meta cinematografica di quanto si pensi e che non sottolinea una certa passione nell'estetizzare una violenza, ma più un modo per rappresentare violentemente il retroscena della produzione e distribuzione cinematografica. Essendo anche tra l'altro profetico per se stesso e per il proprio destino con tutti i problemi che ha avuto. E con questo chiudo questa introduzione forse troppo lunga, un po' perché una nuova analisi di Serbian Film sarà nel libro e un po' perché ovviamente sentirete di più direttamente dalla bocca di Sergian Spasojevic, il regista. E a tal proposito voglio ovviamente ringraziare tutto lo staff del Torino Underground Cinefest che ha accolto di buon cuore la mia richiesta e che organizza tutti gli anni qualcosa di spettacolare. Mauro, Nunzio, Lara, Alessandro, Laura e Laura sono stati due giorni spettacolari con voi dove mi sono sentito a casa. E poi grazie mille anche a Nico, secondo cameraman, fan del canale da una vita che ora è diventato un grande amico, ovviamente grazie anche a tutti quelli che sono venuti all'evento. Grazie davvero di cuore. Se il cinema degli eccessi è tornato ed è tornato in grande stile è anche grazie a voi. Ma bando alle ciance, vi presento Sergian Spassovic. Ciao a tutti e benvenuti a questa meravigliosa occasione. Grazie al Torino Underground Cinefest abbiamo appunto l'opportunità di intervistare uno dei nostri idoli, nonché colui che ha dato vita a questo canale, in realtà eh, quella notte buia e tempestosa eh, in cui ho visto con un amico con cui fondammo la produzione ormai 11 anni fa e Serbian Film insieme a Martyrs e poi ho iniziato a fare questi video e ho conosciuto grazie a, ai Serbian Film e all'occasione che mi ha dato iniziando questa rubrica uno dei miei migliori amici, la mia ragazza, una persona meravigliosa che adesso sono tutti qua e quindi partiamo benvenuto Serjan eh, a Cinema degli Eccessi, benvenuto in Italia, benvenuto su Shiva Produzioni e benvenuto al Torino Underground Cinefest. I didn't understand the clue, but uh, 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 of course uh, thank you for uh, having me and uh, it's it's real pleasure pleasure to be here. Quindi e dove cazzo devo guardare tra l'altro lì? Partiamo. In un'intervista hai detto che il tuo scopo non era quello di scioccare o infrangere qualche record dell'estremo, però alla fine è successo. E Serbian Film ha alzato l'asticella della rappresentabile, è qualcosa di rivoluzionario. Sapevi di star dando vita a qualcosa di rivoluzionario in questo senso? Ti saresti mai immaginato che il tuo film potesse diventare così tanto un cult? Credo tra l'altro il più celebre tra quelli diffusi su internet. <ride> Uh, lots of things there, yeah. Uh, well, uh, first of all, yes, uh, I, I did mention that uh, not once but many times. The Serbian film was never about uh, shock or uh, breaking records or uh, uh, doing things just for the shock value. That was never uh, in plan in terms of we never talked about it. When I say we, I mean uh, a writer, Alexander, and myself. That was not the goal or that was not the point. But uh, let's say, uh, uh, knowing uh, our attitudes and, uh, and the load we have inside and uh, uh, feelings and emotions we have uh, toward the world we live in today and our intention to make a film and certainly knowing that uh, we're not going to do that in gloves or sugar coating or with that uh, false art mantra, less is more, So we went through a journey spilling our guts and feelings and instincts to the paper and that led us to a, to a Serbian film. So as I said, never thought about that and uh, knowing uh, what are the things happening now with the film and about it, it's just, uh, it's just how it happens. So that's, uh, the goal was some, I mean, the goal was uh, uh, just uh, an honest and emotional expression about the world we live in today. So maybe our, our emotions and our words were just uh, maybe stronger than, than some others. That's all. Is it satisfied with the reaction of the public? What part of public? Certainly I'm happy that film is, uh, is out there, is alive, is still alive and is, it's uh, still talked about. I'm not happy for the film having uh, so much problems, so... Uh, Uh, difficulties uh, in its life, difficulties in uh, distribution, in screening. I mean, it started from the beginning, difficulties in post-production, difficulties and problems 
uh, with uh, labs uh, throughout the Europe uh, developing uh, materials from digital to film stock and things. That's uh, the unfortunate part, but I, I am satisfied with my work. I am happy that uh, film has its audience. I mean, there is no film made for everyone. A any film will have a, 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 like a voice for and voice against it. So I'm happy that, uh, uh, that the Serbian film is still alive. Uh, we are having, a, we had a re-release in US like two years ago and uh, that re-release is uh, like uh, uh, moving on. We are preparing uh, an extended cut with uh, five minutes added uh, that were never in the film, never in the, not even in the uncut version, because we have original uncut version, that's, that, that's how film was uh, intended to be. Uh, then, unfortunately, cut version appeared because of censorships and all the, all the problems we had in distribution. But now, let's say 13 years after, things are millimeter like uh, uh, better for a Serbian film, so we can release uh, uncut version somewhere and we are preparing that extended cut. Unfortunately, it just proves uh, some of, uh, one of the like uh, known theories that uh, humankind goes in, in circles, it doesn't go forward. So uh, some movies banned in certain times are free like 50 years after, or artwork, whatever, uh, free 50 years after when it's not, when it's not, uh, when the subject matter is not about that society particularly, but it's about some other society, then we can release that. But we're gonna ban something from today. So it goes in circles. So maybe in 50 years, uh, better time uh, will come for a Serbian film. A Serbian documentary. It's a film planned by a Serbian film sale, sales agency from US, uh, Unearthed Films. So it's a, uh, it's a story about a Serbian film containing uh, never seen before footages from, uh, from the set. So we have lots of materials from uh, making of, from the set, from the shooting. And we're going to, I mean, we, they will combine that with, uh, with a story about a Serbian film. So it's a just a, it's a st story about uh, the problems we had, intentions we had, ideas we had. And it's a story about a small group of uh, artists who wanted to say something, maybe in a, in a rough way, but small group, group of artists wanted to say something and to make something and it went out of control regarding the, the rest of the world and some censorships and bureaucracy. Bureaucracy is the big problem of today's art. That's uh, in general or in short is going to be a, a subject or a story about the Serbian documentary. So. A Serbian film parla soprattutto di famiglia, distrugge il concetto di famiglia che spesso è la cellula ipocrita sulla quale viene costituita l'identità di un paese. La figura di Marco, fratello poliziotto, quindi rappresentante sia la famiglia che lo Stato, è il personaggio che mi pare porti avanti questo concetto. Perché l'hai voluta distruggere così tanto nel profondo? This is a complex question and uh, like to make it a bit fun, uh, uh, you should ask directors an easy questions like how long did you shoot your film? Was it fun? How, how did it all start? Because, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of talking too much about uh, my own film especially, but, but in general, I'm not a, much of a theory guy or analysis. So this kind of question is, uh, could be easy, but it's also difficult because you're asking me to analyze my own film, my own work, or even my own thoughts and ideas. So th this is uh, actually work for you, uh, you guys that are doing like uh, film reviews and analysts and so you can find lots of things uh, uh, inside and I, I've encountered lots of uh, reviews and talk about the Serbian film analyzing and finding things that let's say I, uh, uh, I wasn't planning or I wasn't aware of yeah not planning was a bad bad uh, saying so I, I wasn't aware of but the, uh, nothing is, uh, of course, nothing is uh, accidental. If I put my emotions and instincts and my guts into it, and my attitude toward the world, world we live in, I live in, uh, uh, then y you can have uh, 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 lots of things, layer things, and questions like, like you're having. Uh, so to try to answer your question, we never during uh, uh, during making of a film or creating a, a structure and story, 
We never specifically said, okay, let's crush the family or let's, you know, but that was implied. We know where we were going. We know what we wanted to say. So many things were implied. Of course, we're going to crush it because it's a, if you, if you look to a family as a core of any society, family doesn't stand a chance not against today's world, it's not against, but the world is against uh, the family. Doesn't stand a chance in this crazy world of today. For the things we need to do to put the bread on the table, that's, that's like, uh, that itself is destruction of ourselves first and then the family. Of course, I'm uh, exaggerating a little bit, but you understand that I wanna say it's, uh, that's why we use the pornographic layer as a, as a metaphor for everyday life. Whatever we have to do to put bread on, on, on the family's table, it borders with pornography. I mean, with, uh, or with inner soul pornography, what we have to do and to obey to do that. So crushing of the family probably has that, that source. Nothing stands the chance against the world of today, so not even the family as a core of society. You called it uh, uh, hypocritical, cell, your, your question almost answers it. It shouldn't be a hypocritical cell, but the very fact that we are referring to as, as that through, through, let's say, through art, it means that we, we all like crashed it down. Comunque lo stato di calda dei film inevitabilmente porta a noi che lo guardiamo a cervellarci sui significati e a porci delle domande, anche perché film, se vuoi maledetti come questi, poi non hanno domande perché magari il regista non è, che ne so, come Tarantino che fa 57 interviste al minuto, non c'è la possibilità, quindi noi rimaniamo senza risposte e adesso che abbiamo l'occasione magari eh, Te le facciamo, magari vogliono indagare perché per natura siamo curiosi, soprattutto quando un prodotto, anzi scusami, un'opera è così estrema, interessante e appunto maledetta, quindi eh, hai fatto un bellissimo film e adesso ti prendi anche le domande un po' eh, quelle che non ti piacciono, insomma. Of course, of course, I uh, understand all that and thank you for, uh, for everything and for those kind words. Uh, uh, of course, I, I get it, I know all of that, I understand that. Uh, I just said, just as, as I mentioned, that uh, I'm not a fan of all these, uh, these talks. Like, uh, I made a film so I don't have to talk. <laughs> but again, you know, but th it's, it's, uh, it's how industry today uh, uh, works. And even in, in some bad examples, sometimes for some movies, uh, unfortunately, it's even, uh, it's even more important for the, for the, I don't know, authors to, to go around and talk about it. Like, okay, uh, that's the film, but let me uh, tell you something. So uh, that's, uh, that's the way uh, uh, things are going today. Uh, uh, talk and talk and talk and it's important to talk. I'm of course happy to be at your service and to, to be able to answer some questions. It doesn't matter if, uh, if this is like a, a, a film that will have a, a, a small number of showings or I will have a small number of opportunities to talk about it all or someone will ask me every day a hundred questions. It's, it's the same thing in terms of I should not talk about my film. Someone else sh sh should do it. But again, I understand the, the name of the game and uh, I'm always uh, 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 happy to talk to you guys and to to give answers that 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 I can. You know, it's uh, it's one thing to make a film, uh, and the other thing is to to talk about it. It's it's, it's not easy, especially because uh, really, I, as I said, it 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 was uh, honest and instinctive and emotional mix of our view of today's world, our attitude, and of course, film history or films that we love. So it's uh, it's a cocktail of uh, of many things. Yeah, sometimes we have to talk and okay, let's talk. Come intento e come poetica della violenza vedo il tuo film molto vicino al Salò di Pasolini, eh, dove però si voleva usare il fascismo come scusa per riflettere sul concetto generico di anarchia del potere, sempre usando il sesso. E Serbian Film è un film sul male e sullo schifo perpetrati dalla nostra specie, eh, come hai detto tu, ma nonostante ciò si chiama E Serbian. Perché questa specifica? Cosa critichi in più al tuo paese rispetto agli altri? Sembra un po' il processo inverso attuato da Pasolini. Ah, 
You, you ask so, so many things. It's very interesting you're, you're mentioning Sao. Serbian film, very often, of course, I was asked about my influences and uh, movies I like to watch or uh, directors I like. So Serbian film was never influenced by any specific film or uh, any specific thing or specific uh, director. It was just, uh, as I said, combination of, of many things. But mentioning Salo is uh, interesting because uh, I watched Salo long, long time ago. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe when I was 16, 18, and once again when I was 20 something. So Salo, as, uh, as some other movies that, uh, uh, that were having like big, uh, big uh, uh, impact on me or influence, like some uh, Friedkin movies or Pekimpo movies, because I was uh, not specifically horror fan. I'm more of a Friedkin Pekimpo fan. Violence per se has never been my bag, except personally. But in pictures, it has, and I would like to uh, try to at least portray it on the screen as it is. Uh, and I've failed, and I've succeeded. And, uh, but of all those pictures you talk about, basically, are morality plays. I've broken a lot of fences and noses. I just do. Uh, best kind of a job I know how and uh, but there are certain people who are filmmakers and there are certain people who are not that's all but talking about those films who had uh, influenced on me and Salo also it was not about like watching watching Salo and saying oh I would like to make something like this oh I, I didn't I didn't perceive Salo just as a film that was uh, that was like uh, education that was like a lecture that was uh, uh, 10 years of school uh, uh, in two hours. That was like some uh, uh, life experience no one can tell you about, or it's very hard to, to talk about it. You had to, to see it. So in those ways, it's very interesting. You're, you are mentioning Salo, and uh, to try to get back to your question, title of a Serbian film or the story of a Serbian film, we did start our story from uh, our closest surroundings, from, from, our, from our backyard. But we hoped, and we still hope, and I think we managed uh, that we were talking, uh, that we were telling a universal story in your universal language. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons uh, the film is uh, understood, uh, uh, let's say worldwide, but it, it's understood in Europe, lots of uh, festivals and, and, and questions and interest from Europe and US and Japan and South Korea. So we can say uh, like a civilized world understands it uh, and hates it at the, at the same time. So title Serbian film is saying uh, many things as the, the, the film itself is a uh, talk about uh, or, or our uh, uh, feeling we have toward the world we live in. It's also about the, the art of today, the film of today. Somewhere in the background, even if it's not uh, mentioned specifically about politics today, it's not, as I said, not mentioned specifically, but people are reading politics all over. It feels somewhere there. So the title of Serbian film also is saying Serbian politics, Serbian film industry, Serbian art. So it could be called uh, differently, it would be the same. You know, it, it, it could be called Miloš as the a, as a main guy, but, but, but it's all the same. Whoever you are, whatever you do, you will end up at the same gutter, at the same hole. Uh, raped and, and dead. So uh, that was like, that's the only reference I could mention. Regarding the title, it's just a Serbian story that could be, hopefully could be told and uh, understood uh, universally. Characters uh, 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 from Salo would, uh, today, they would order movies from Vukmir. They would, they would do the same, the same thing. They would uh, feed their hunger. Manja! Through different uh, different ways that are that are possible today. So I don't know if it's like reverse uh, process or the same one. But uh, again, interesting question and interesting thing uh, to to think about. And again, I'm I'm very glad and surprised that you mentioned Salo because uh, it's a very important and very 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 big big film. Una piccolissima domanda perché effettivamente le parole che usano riguardo alla metafora politica 
eh, della Serbia, della Jugoslavia, di Tito, eccetera. Cioè il fatto è che è come se le avessi dette tu, su internet dicono che le abbia dette tu, non sono parole che, cioè non è all'interpretazione della, della critica, quindi noi ci rifacciamo a forse una leggenda metropolitana a questo punto. Well, internet is full of, of things. <laughs> true and false. Those things were often mentioned in interviews, in talks, in analysis. And they are absolutely true in terms of that's my life experience. I was born in a communist country, lived in a socialist country, lived in a post-war country, post-civil war country, with some kind of mutated uh, whatever regime uh, uh, trying to go to democracy, but again lost in its way and things like that. So uh, again, emotional and instinctive expression we had, I had, uh, contains all those things. So people watching This film, probably uh, knowing some background or connecting some interviews and talks, will we'll, uh, uh, we'll gather that, uh, that story. I, I got lots of questions from, uh, I mean, uh, lots of different and interesting and crazy questions from uh, European audience, for example, when we are here talking about politics and regimes and Yugoslavia and Tita and everything. So, for example, some Euro European audience is asking me, Is this a slap to Europe because they turned your back during a war in Yugoslavia? A US audience sometimes is asking, is this slap to US for NATO bombing of Yugoslavia? So I could only be, let's say, like uh, uh, happy or satisfied that uh, this film or this work uh, uh, has all those things and emotions inside. As I said just to the previous question, uh, we never mentioned politics specifically but it's read like uh, big uh, politic content because the main villain Wolfmir is is all of that he is a politician he is a government he is a government assassin he he's he's all evil we can see and and and, and recognize so uh, there is nothing of a, of a legend of that uh, of those uh, comments or or talks i don't even remember if I sometimes said that in the interview or not, but uh, it was uh, mentioned before, it was asked about it, and probably through my answers uh, we got somewhere there. But uh, people are, are reading uh, all those things from the film. La macchina da presa è uno degli elementi più violenti del film. Come mai questa scelta? Well, again, we are touching that, uh, that part of analysis that, as I said, some things I didn't specifically like refer to or, or planned or written, but it was there. Nothing is by accident. Instead of uh, analyzing that, I can, uh, I can tell you what were the things I, I did plan or I did think. The plan was not to show any shot through the camera, through camera lenses. So everything was either on a camera monitor Or, uh, on, uh, or, or through uh, uh, main characters uh, remembering and, and visions. We only have two shots in the film through something that resembles surveillance camera, but two small shots just to like, uh, give a hint of some, some presence above us. But the plan was never to show anything through the camera, but to have a camera as a, as a person, to have a cold, Uh, empty-hearted person on the set. So that, that was the plan. If it reads like that, then great. So it's, uh, it's actually a question for you. Why do you. Why do you see that? Why do you read it? But uh, the only thing I can say is uh, those couple of things that, that I did plan. So uh, if it ended up like that, then great. Are there any yes or and no questions? This is... Yes, dai, arriviamo alle domande facili. Raccontaci un po' la genesi di Vukmir, che per me è uno dei villain horror meglio riusciti della storia proprio. Thank you for that, and uh, I can even thank you in the name of uh, Sergei, who acted uh, Vukmir. Vukmir is uh, like a personification of all, all bad things, that we can uh, see or touch. And he is representing everything or everything we uh, were referring 
uh, in this film. He is a corrupt government. He is a corrupt uh, politician. He is uh, 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 corrupted or, uh, or uh, a government uh, uh, movie maker. He is a director of uh, A-class festival. He is A-class festival programmer. He is a, a, a bureaucracy. He is also an assassin for government. He's a, He's, as I said, everything, uh, all the bad things we can, we can recognize or, or, or see or maybe even touch. So yes, that's that government, that's that politician, that's that artist, that, that's bureaucracy, that, that is that rule, things like that. So he's uh, all that is in front of us that we can refer to as, uh, as bad things. And of course, at the end, we just see that uh, he's only one small screw in the in the machinery that we cannot see or understand or even comprehend like what the hell is all this and why is it doing all those things why is it there politic politics corrupted everything politics is like the worst thing I know, of course, not counting mad people and uh, murderers and, and uh, rapists and everything, but they are, they are there. They are like uh, influencing that. They are influencing uh, art in general. I mean, the life, the life of, uh, on this world, our lives, and the art also. So uh, you can say specifically the film industry, yes. So it's a, it's a mixture of uh, bureaucracy, rules, and even political correctness. That is uh, like uh, all that bureaucracy and political correctness are suffocating the, the art of today and the artistic expression and even the, the free speech. To be clear, political correctness probably started as a good thing. Like, uh, okay, let's uh, try to teach uh, uh, people who cannot understand uh, that, I don't know, like we are all the same, uh, all the races are the same, all the genders are the same, like uh, let's act normal. So it started like that. But along the way, it uh, distorted somehow into something incorrect with all the, the rules that are enforced uh, to, to, let's say, us uh, normal people. I know that we are the same, but if you're like, you know, like uh, uh, picking my mind or, or, or hammering that idea into my mind, I, I'm, I have to fight it, it hurts. In that way, yes, politics influences, uh, influences everything and it influences it in their own uh, 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 corrupted and bureaucratic way that it just, uh, just like uh, destroys everything. Astraendo un attimo Vukmir dallo snuff e dalla violenza vera in un concetto di finzione, Siamo d'accordo con lui che comunque si, ci si esalti nel rappresentare e diffondere alcuni concetti usando la violenza come effettivamente è successo in essere di un film o come hanno fatto eh, maestri come Friedkin e Becky in, pa in passato. Inter interesting question, of course, an interesting connection, but uh, you cannot share uh, Wukmir's vision unless you're into snuff movies, so that's something, that's something uh, specific. But why is, is Vukmir uh, uh, doing all that? He's actually, in a metaphorical and exaggerated way, he's uh, giving to the A-class festival audience, to a, to a higher society, he's giving them what they want. It's not about violence, as much as about victimizations and victims. Uh, it's like we are buying uh, emotions, importing emotions, we are buying emotions, we are creating a, a false emotions for ourselves by watching some half real, half uh, 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 fiction movies from a distant poor countries and uh, barefoot kids uh, crying on the ground, uh, on the rain and in some flea markets. And like we are watching that and we are sharing a, a tear and like, oh, we have emotions and we can feel. And Wukmir is, is actually exaggerating that and giving them what they want. You want to feel, you want victims. Now I'm going to give you the ultimate victim, the new, new, newborn victim. So uh, uh, that's in his crazy terms. And in our metaphorical way, uh, uh, we are giving the audience through Wukmir what, what, they actually, what they actually want. So that's 
that's what uh, Vukmir is uh, is uh, delivering to to his uh, employees back to the salon. So those characters from Salo would today would uh, order movies through Vukmir or order newborns uh, uh, from Vukmir. So that's. Uh, that's all in connection. That's what uh, Wokmir is doing. And that's, uh, in a way, our comment to artistic uh, festival, European, especially world of today, because everything, uh, most things of the, in Europe, especially in Eastern Europe, is funded by uh, governments. So you don't have like uh, productions like in Hollywood or, uh, you know, like a, or private and things. So it's all, all governments' uh, funds and uh, European funds. So it's always with some background. What do you have to do for, for that? And other question regarding violence, it, it just, uh, I don't know, it was, uh, first of all, subject of this film. It was about violence and it was against violence. So uh, we used all those violent and, and shocking scenes not to, not to promote them. So anyone who, uh, who is seeing uh, something arousing or uh, uh, promotive, in uh, in this film something's wrong with the with those persons so we wanted to uh, tell something of course differently and to make some uh, some other points so violence in some scenes uh, uh, or in some cases or in some movies could be very well used or poetically used as in the in the movies or directors we mentioned before and you just mentioned so yeah come era l'atmosfera sul set i contenuti sono forti quindi magari non so, c'era un po' di tensione con gli attori o c'era comunque un'atmosfera positiva di star realizzando qualcosa insieme. E il tizio del New Born Porn è ancora in terapia? He never was in therapy. <laughs> First of all, we had, uh, uh, we were very lucky with uh, choosing our cast. Uh, first of all, we got uh, uh, pretty much the best of the best from Serbian actors. They're all like A-class actors, not just in Serbia, but generally speaking. They understood the, the, the story, they understood the script, and they wanted to, to share the same, uh, uh, same emotions and same ideas. So everything was, of course, clear and, and uh, 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 very well planned before the shooting. So uh, when you have a crew that, is, uh, that uh, understands what they are doing, that they want to uh, uh, tell the same story, and shooting that is planned very, uh, very good. Then on set, you have to deal pretty much only with uh, technicalities and you know difficult things. Uh, sometimes with effects, sometimes with naked actors, sometimes with special effects, sometimes with uh, other difficult things that can uh, happen on the set. But uh, uh, there was no any tension of that kind regarding the content because we know what uh, what we were saying what we want to say so it was just uh, on us to to make it to to shoot it so it was pretty much about uh, uh, technicalities and, and 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 some physical work of course lots of uh, rough days lots of uh, uh, heavy uh, heavy scenes we had uh, kids on the set of course they were always shot uh, separately from violent scenes and nudity scenes. We had a director specialized in working with kids. So everything was very well planned and uh, it was pretty much as any, any other shooting, problems, fun. We had a great experience. Uh, we stayed in connection and they all have a, a, a really good experience uh, doing this and they are, as I know, proud of, uh, of doing this film. And again, the guy from the newborn scene. Uh, he's a fantastic guy, great actor, and, and, and it's the nicest guy you can, you can meet. It was, it was really, really uh, crazy how we uh, uh, got to him and uh, the way we talked about it and understand everything we need to do. So he was, he was fantastic and he, he did a great job and he, he's okay, he's good. The uh, bambino adesso sarà maggiorenne, presumo. We did some uh, interviews for that documentary back in 2018. So uh, again, uh, very difficult. Uh, anything connected uh, with the Serbian film is difficult. So even this documentary is like uh, 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 years in, in gathering materials. Uh, I met him for that interview in 2018. He was somewhere around 18 or, or 20. I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, he's uh, studying for a cinematographer, so he is in a, in a movie 
business or movie thing, movie movie school. So uh, uh, I met him back then. He was uh, it was nice. It was all good. He liked the movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. He told me he watched it. Yeah, he watched it like a couple of years uh, before that. And yeah, he was he liked it and he was proud of it. And of course, that's why he uh, he uh, uh, agreed to that interview. The three films that invece hanno sconvolto più te scioccato, disturbato. Again, easy. I can like give you some three or, or com uh, complicated question. Uh, it depends when did you watch the film, you know. Now or I think I don't know, after my after 15 or 18 year of mine uh, uh, nothing was disturbing. So uh, the one thing is talking about kids impression. I don't know, I remember watching Cat People when I was 8. And I was like scared and I was uh, waiting for some pumas uh, around every corner during the night. And now it's just a beautiful film. It's crazy but beautiful. So uh, we can maybe talk more about or mentioning more about some uh, 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 effects in terms of influence. So uh, when I was a kid I remember like uh, uh, as, again as a teenager because I was watching lots of lots of movies. Um, I was like 12, 15, something like that. Uh, Friedkin's uh, Sorcerer. Pekimpo's Wild Bunch. And uh, Sergio Leone's uh, The Good, uh, The Bad and the Ugly. That was like, uh, I, was, I was watching that when I was 12 or, or something like that. And I was like uh, glued to the wall. I, I, that, was, that was something, you know. But also after that, uh, uh, if we want to go to a, a, a horror spectrum, you can say like uh, Exorcist, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I don't know where you can put Salo in, but Salo. Everywhere. Everywhere, <laughs> yeah. And um, a psychological effect, like, I don't know, uh, for me is uh, Mikhail Haneke. This is very psychological. Uh, some director, some uh, movie I that you are inside your mind. I'm not a fan of Haneke. Well, as I said before, uh, there, is, there was nothing like specific, like, oh, I want to make a film like this, or I want to make like this director. It, it was all a, a giant experience. Like a spectator. Uh, I stopped being a spectator like 30 years ago. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, I, I like uh, Lars von Trier. Okay. I watched, uh, when I watched uh, uh, Antichrist, that was like fantastic. I couldn't understand half of it, but I knew it was something fantastic and great. But I, I don't know. Uh, uh, I cannot give you anything uh, specific. I, I mean, I, I mentioned a couple of movies. I think that's, uh, that covers it. When I was a teenager, I liked to watch Chuck Norris. <laughs> yeah. Ora passiamo alle vostre domande, a quelle che ho raccolto su YouTube, su Instagram, eh, su Facebook e la prima è la domanda infatti che ci siamo posti tutti. Penso che quello che ci chiediamo tutti sia, ma come cazzo ti è venuto in mente il mio born porn? <laughs> As I already touched the, the, the subject of uh, creating a Serbian film, uh, brainstorming with, uh, with a writer, with Alexander, and uh, uh, being that uh, we knew each other before, we were writing some things before that were even worse than a Serbian film and not possible to be made. Uh, we, I don't know, like uh, we knew where we were, we were going, so uh, we were just uh, like uh, putting things, uh, uh, giving things out loud, uh, giving our emotions and, and uh, spilling our, our guts to the paper. So. At some point, when we get to that scene, and uh, like, uh, 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 what should we say now? What uh, should happen? What should Vukmir show? What should uh, 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 Vukmir uh, uh, give Milos as uh, both uh, uh, threatening and uh, 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 like uh, amazing uh, in his uh, uh, crazy mind thing? Uh, somehow, it just felt disturbingly natural uh, 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 to give that scene to to like uh, think of that scene in a way as a, as the most simplest metaphor you can have about uh, this world treating you today 
e c'erano invece delle idee così assurde, esagerate, che alla fine avete preferito scartarle perfino per un film del genere? No, pretty much everything we, we wanted to put in this structure, it is there. So as I said before, there was uh, 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 no intention about let's do, when, I don't know, amazing or, or unbelievable things. So we were trying to be uh, very strict and, uh, and correct with our, with our uh, uh, structure and story. So pretty much, as I can remember, everything we, we wanted, it's, it's in. Qual è stata la reazione dei tuoi conoscenti della tua famiglia al film? <laughs> uh, uh, the, the expression I was gave to was like, oh, bravo. You know, so I don't know what they were thinking uh, during night in the bed, but uh, in a way they, they were like, okay, that's what you want to say, that's what you were thinking, you know. And uh, uh, if I may add, that, that question uh, uh, connects to a, a, a very often situation at, at certain festivals or, or, or meetings, like uh, people connecting uh, 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 me to the film or talks to the film. So sometimes it's very, it's very easy because people, I don't know, expect like some uh, pale monster that made a film and uh, just uh, sometimes just a few words of like uh, it's an honest expression of, of how we feel and things like that. It's, it's enough for people to just to say like, oh, aha, uh -huh. because, uh, you know, the, the, the whole atmosphere is like, ah, this is, uh, I don't know what. Il grande Kirio poi qua è un po' colorito nella terminologia. Cosa pensi delle persone che pensano che per fare un film del genere si debba essere dei malati di mente? Well, you know, uh, it's to be expected or uh, uh, it's not even surprising. Uh, some other things were surprising, like problems we have in post-production and, and, and official reactions. People thinking uh, uh, different things, you know, uh, people are still in the level that uh, chasing actors on the street because they kill some of their favorite characters in the series. So they're still like uh, not connecting uh, or disconnecting reality and, and fiction. So uh, I have no specific thoughts. It, it happens. As I said, not every film is made for everyone. So you will love something, you will hate something. So it's probably easier for them to think that something's wrong with me. <laughs> Qualcuno chiede quando il sequel? When someone gives me two million dollars, there it is. <laughs> e in generale, anche qua il linguaggio è colorito, eh, quando lo fai un altro film così figo che è passato una vita e basta rumors? Unfortunately, I didn't do any movie uh, after, after a Serbian film. I did just one short segment for ABCs of that. Uh, so, I don't know, uh, ups and downs, uh, 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 some scripts were close to be made, some not, so uh, 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 last few years I was uh, out of the industry doing something completely different, so now I'm, let's say, trying to get back, so we'll see, but uh, 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 there are always uh, scripts and ideas, but nothing uh, concrete in the plans or in production or budgeted yet. Marta si interroga sul fatto, ti chiede, stai un po' meglio adesso? No, I'm the same. Sebo in flevo, salve signor regista, potrebbe girarne uno peggio? Probably, as I said, this was not meant to be as hard as, as it was. And uh, very often uh, when people ask me like, uh, okay, what do you think now, 10, 15 years after, uh, was it like too much, was it unnecessary and things like that? Uh, my, my answer is usually, and my impression, my deep impression is actually that, uh, however it sounds crazy, uh, my, uh, uh, I was too soft. Uh, I think that humankind deserves worse depiction than, than I've done it. So the answer is yes. El Rated Box, posso abbracciarti per aver realizzato un capolavoro? Sure. <laughs> e Lorenzo Marchesi invece vorrebbe vedere la tua cronologia internet così per vivere. Uh -huh. Mostly uh, heavy metal from uh, 70s. Chiedono se hai mai provato la psicoterapia. No. I haven't found a good doctor. Passiamo a quelle un po' più provocatorie. Ad esempio, il buon frusciante a cui mi pare che il film non sia piaciuto proprio, dai miei ricordi, dice eh, non ti rompe il cazzo, cercate di leggerlo in Livornese come lo leggerebbe lui, però non ti rompe il cazzo che dopo tutti questi anni a nessuno frega una fava del resto della tua produzione. 
e, e qui intende che nessuno ti abbia più fatto fare film perché gli ho chiesto. I, I knew it's, it's not easy. It wasn't easy and it's not going to be easy. It's, it's not easy for anyone. The uh, film industry is a very hard industry, so uh, uh, I cannot uh, cry about it. I can do something about it or not doing something about it. Uh, I did have uh, some offers, some uh, works, uh, as I said, lots of ideas and uh, scripts. Nothing made yet. We'll see what, uh, what happens, but it's, uh, it's, as I said, it's tough for, uh, for anyone. Anyone who is in the film industry knows that uh, how, how tough it is, so uh, uh, I cannot, as I said, I cannot cry about or I cannot be surprised, so it's a, it's a normal thing. Non pensi che con questa eccessiva violenza pornografica il messaggio che volevi dare, se mai ce ne fosse stato uno, risulti inconsistente? Uh, for some people, yes, of course. Uh, uh, some people, again, it's normal. There is no film made for everyone. So some people uh, will immediately dislike the film. Some people will get lost along the way. Some people will find the way uh, through the film. So uh, the only thing I can do is like uh, sometimes having a chance to talk with you guys and maybe explain something. But uh, that, as I said before, that, that's not the point. Film is there. Film should uh, talk for itself. Who gets it, gets it. This is the longest talk I ever have. <laughs> Emanuele. Un po' ti odia dal profondo perché mi ha lasciato 35.000 commenti. Una sola cosa, cazzo, pensavi di fare? Solo stupire senza avere talento? Impara da quelli bravi. No, no, it's, it's impossible to answer, to answer that, but uh, uh, that kind of reactions and comments are uh, not new to me. That, that all started even before the film was out. For some reason, the news about the film were out and uh, maybe because of the trailer on the, on the internet back in 2009, before the, before the release. So uh, uh, we were like predecessors of uh, internet threats back in Serbia or Eastern Europe. We got uh, all the love uh, comments and emails a long time ago, so uh, that thing is just uh, fun and, and cute, you know. La minchiata che il film sia una metafora della guerra ti è servita a giustificare la violenza che volevi rappresentare ammantandola di un senso intellettuale per non farti giudicare? Uff, uh. <laughs> no, no, it's, 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 it's kind of long, every word is... Uh, is very like uh, 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 complicated uh, in that question. C can you read it again? But really, uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> yeah, sounds bizarre. It's like uh, it's almost like was I hiding hiding be behind a Serbian film? It, it, it's it's a, it's a bizarre a little bit. So uh, yeah, uh, uh, tough to tough to answer, but uh, in a way like okay, I understand what he meant. Like I. I wanted to make uh, like a violent, sick thing, but hiding uh, uh, behind some metaphors. But again, him reading the metaphors, or just uh, uh, reading uh, about metaphors, that's a different thing. But if he read the metaphors in a film, so he, he got it. But if maybe he read metaphors uh, in some reviews, then okay, let's, let's say we can understand the question. But uh, yeah, of course, I cannot answer him like, uh, yes, I was hiding and wanted to do bad things, uh, hiding it in a good robe. But uh, it, yeah, I understand all those, uh, all those reactions. You know, as I said, not everyone will like it. So uh, being a part of film industry and being a part of, uh, of uh, uh, audience, I don't like everything I've seen. And there are even movies uh, I don't like, but I respect. So you have to understand everything, uh, every possible reaction uh, 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 in order to like, you know, like be, uh, uh, be able to, to uh, uh, go through, through this industry or first of all go through filmmaking. Lasciamoci l'intervista è finita, grazie a Sergio, una persona squidita, gentilissima, come potete vedere, sicura, non mi ha ucciso, sono vivo. E un consiglio uh, a chi non ha ancora visto il film e vuole vederlo, tipo mio amico Simone che lo vedrà per la prima volta stasera. Cosa gli consigli? Come, come lo lasci? First of all, thank you again. Thank you for this chance. Uh, uh, for a guy who said uh, doesn't like to talk much about films, I was, uh, I was, I was talking too much. But uh, uh, I wanted to, like, uh, uh, to try to like, answer every of your question and to try to uh, 
uh, engage into conversation. So uh, yes, it was my pleasure and I'm again glad to be here. Uh, regarding uh, advice, nothing more than uh, it's just a film. So it's only a movie. Try to try to get it uh, as a, as a fictional thing that is trying to say something, maybe through some metaphors or like through related things. It's only, it's, a, movie, it's only, it's a, movie, only a movie. It's only a movie. It's <laughs> not like a tour guide to uh, <laughs> Eastern Europe or something. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again. Sicuramente un'intervista che farà discutere, sicuramente avrà alimentato l'odio che molti di voi provano verso il suo film. Per quanto riguarda me, il mio parere rimane intonso. Vederlo in sala è stato ancora più spettacolare, anche se il livello di shock della prima volta non si scorda mai, non si raggiungerà mai. Anche perché sia il sottoscritto che voi fedelissimi, noi ce lo siamo sparato ben prima che diventasse di moda. Okay. Io ringrazio comunque di cuore Sergio, una persona squisita con cui mi sono trovato benissimo anche durante la, la, la presentazione, i Q&A, dimostrazione ultima e definitiva che per fare un film del genere non si debba essere degli psicopatici. Io sono preso dalle sue ispirazioni, dai suoi shock così classici, così intramontabili. Voi che ne dite? Pagliacci, che vi devo dire? Io sono quasi commosso di questo ritorno di Cinema degli Eccessi e per quanto riguarda il libro state sintonizzati per sapere di più sull'uscita, sulla data e tutto il resto che eh, prima verrà in pre-order e poi anche nei negozi fisici e penso anche su Amazon. Spero di riuscire a tenere la cadenza settimanale d'uscita dei video. Ho tanti, 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 tanti altri film di cui parlarvi. Bella regà, che il cinema sia con voi. Nella prossima puntata di Cinema degli Eccessi, più violento e disgustoso di sempre, ma anche un'opera d'arte incredibile, affascinante, ipnotica, visivamente incantevole nel suo marciume estremo. Discesa dantesca del protagonista in un inferno pieno di creature che si ammazzano violentemente l'una con l'altra. Sarà forse anche il destino del protagonista quello di essere preso